Greetings and a warm welcome from me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. Today, in the latest of my deep dive videos, I'm going to share with you all about the Mercury Kazemi, which occurs on October the 20th at 5.37 a.m. Universal Central Time. What is a Kazemi? What's the difference between a superior and an inferior conjunction which influences this event. What can we expect with Mercury combining with the Sun in the sign of Libra? How can we work with this energy? Why is Pluto so powerfully positioned to challenge the benefits of the combination between the Sun and Mercury? I'll share with you the solar event chart so you can understand that. I'm also going to tell you about when the last Kazemi occurred and when the next one is going to happen. And finally, I'll go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces, which you can relate to in terms of your sun or your ascendant. The choice is yours. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. Please share any thoughts you have. I try to interact with each one. If you're a returning visitor, it's great to have your company once more. As usual, your likes, comments, shares and subscriptions are really genuinely appreciated. I'd just like to tell you about a truly exciting opportunity. If you'd like to understand what year 2024 holds for you in terms of your personal transits, that's when the moving planets interact with your natal or birth chart, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date or place, or date and place if you don't know your time, I can produce for you your forecast and I will give you the rest of this year free. But in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your life roadmap report, your character analysis, which will help you to understand the patterns that have played out in your life so far and get a much more intimate understanding of them. Please see the link beneath this video for more. So let's just take a look at what a Kazemi is. It doesn't have to be only Mercury. It's when a planet moves forwards in terms of the advancing planet, in this case Mercury, or is retreating in a retrograde but connects exactly with the Sun. Now when a planet's moving forwards it's known as a superior conjunction, when it's retreating it's known as an inferior conjunction, and essentially the planet is in between the Sun and Earth. Now what happens with a Kazemi is the energy of the sun, that burning mass of fire, warmth, but conviction, because it's our life force, turns up and radiates more vibrancy into the other player. So with Mercury traveling forwards in the sign of Libra, in this case, Libra very much to do with communication, it's an air sign, relating, it's governed by the charm in Venus. It can be to do with presentation, it can be accused of being a little bit insincere at times, a little bit synthetic, but also the seventh house in traditional astrology is known very much to be about open enemies. So it can be not just where we're relating or where we need to work harder at our listening skills, it can also be about where we set our boundaries because we could come into contact with people that we don't necessarily like, those open enemies, and it could be combative, it could even be a little war-like. So that's something to be mindful of. But what Mercury's direct motion helps us to do, it helps us to really evaluate things, it helps us to learn, um, it can dissect things, Remember, its rulership of Virgo is very precise, but its rulership of Gemini is very bubbly and um, very interactive and consumes energy and ideas at a very fast pace. So what the combination of the Sun and Mercury does is helps us to look forwards because we're anticipating opportunities because Mercury's direct. Now, when Mercury's in a retrograde and we have that inferior conjunction, it's a much more reflective energy. So that's what happened when Mercury was in the conjunction, the Kazemi with the Sun on the 6th 
of September because it was retrograde and that's going to be repeated in the sign of Capricorn on the 22nd of December. Now the position of this event at 26 degrees and 34 minutes means that the event occurs in the last decan of the sign of Libra which guess what is subroad by Mercury. So uh, a fantastic opportunity to really engage with other people, try to understand more clearly where they're coming from. After all, it's not just about the com conversation, it's about the comprehension. And sometimes, however much we try to lean into another person's position, they can never see that effort. And that can be a little bit of a Libran fault, trying a bit too hard to be a people pleaser. But you know, there is something that's very, very powerful that's influencing this particular event. And that is the role of Pluto. But I just want to tell you briefly about what it means to have a Mercury Kazemi in a natal horoscope. Now, I had a personal uh, client uh, recently who I've read for before, and that person has Mercury conjunct the sun exactly, not one minute out. So it's an exact Kazemi. But in your natal birth chart, if you have Mercury within 37 minutes, that's Kazemi. If it's beyond that, traditional astrologers would say that's combust and the other planet ends up being toast. So rather in a Kazemi where the sun amplifies, magnifies the magnificent of that planet, when it's beyond the 37 minutes, it says it burns it. So it becomes drowned by the energy of the sun. So that's an interesting concept. Now, modern astrologers may view a straightforward conjunction as being, you know, it can be anything up to 10 degrees on a powerful aspect. That's how some astrologers work. In my work, I tend to have a much tighter orb but if you had a three degree connection between Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and the Sun, that's a powerful conjunction to have. Now it does depend on how other planets are relating to that position, but I don't necessarily think in every situation the other planet is toast, but that is the difference between traditional and modern astrology as I see it. But on the screen now, I'm sharing with you the solar event chart. The reason I'm going for solar is I feel it's more relatable for us all. So we can all uh, see into this situation uh, on its own terms. And you can see that the south node is there in Libra, pretty close to the position of the sun and Mercury. The south node is said in our natal horoscope to represent our habitual behavior. So the energy that we always go back to or that we can't quite escape from. Whereas the North Node is very much about the opportunity in this lifetime. So you can see that the North Node on this particular event is pretty close to Chiron. So I feel it's important to relate to people skillfully. There's not a lot of listening that goes on these days. There is a lot of posturing and people take very polarized views there's not a lot of conversation is there really there's not a lot of proper proper uh, conversation discourse it's just very hostile positions so we can learn from that because it is important with the current nodal process and of course the uh, the eclipse process that we do uh, really embrace the importance of relating but we don't dissolve our individuality because if we try too hard to people please we then in, end up becoming invisible but that takes us to the position of Pluto so you can see mighty Pluto about to move back into Aquarius on the 21st of January of course it's now out of its retrograde at 2754 now just so you know the Sun moves forwards and on uh, the 21st of October, the Sun and Pluto will be exactly square. Now, of course, the last time the angle was activated would have been when the Sun was making its way through the sign of Cancer with the opposition. Previous to that, the square would have been with the Sun moving through the sign 
of Aries. And if you remember, the total uh, uh, solar eclipse in Aries on the 20th of April did square up to Pluto. Jupiter was in the mix as well. So what I feel that Pluto does is that we could encounter someone whose desire to dominate a relationship is very, very strong. And however much we use the skillful uh, flexing, uh, fleeting, uh, pivoting, uh, speedy vibe of Mercury to try to connect in a way which brings about some kind of mutual understanding. If you do encounter someone who wants it on their terms and their terms only, for example, like an employer, or if you work for a big corporation, it's pretty inflexible, or you're trying to get some kind of funding for something and no, your particular project doesn't fit the criteria, that stuff could be really, really uh, frustrating. But also this aspect could ask us, ourselves, to think about how we relate and are we uh, really wanting to dominate, even if in quite subtle ways, our interactions with others. So if you are someone who's used to get in your own way, you could end up being challenged by someone really bringing up the whole concept of fairness, which of course Libran energy can be about. So it's possible on this event, despite the unique opportunity to think very crisply about relationships, that there could be some kind of power struggle that plays out. And if you have got a relationship, it could be in the family, it could be with a friend, it could be in a, a, in a love tie, where the other person always in some way wants to dominate you, then this can be something that you push back fiercely against on this event. But also it's important that we're not too obsessive about how we react to this, that we keep a degree of detachment. And I feel that Mercury in Libra does help that because Mercury in the seventh house sees us take things less personally if someone sees something in a different way. When Mercury's in the sixth house, in Virgo, for example, it's very brittle and those little differences can really be magnified beyond all comprehension. But also, the other thing with the square between the Sun and uh, Pluto is it can be a time when we rejuvenate and change something deep within ourselves. So if you are feeling very dissatisfied about your relationships in general, however much it feels like it's always incoming negativity, do try to understand how you might change your inner world because your inner dynamic may then attract different types of energy and that's where Pluto even in a square can still be even if it's hard going can still be very powerful now if you are a cardinal sign and you do have planets towards the end of the sign of Aries Cancer Libra or Capricorn this event is a big deal because it occurs at 26 degrees and 34 minutes just so you know, it takes Mercury 88 days to go around its revolution of the Sun. But if you are a cardinal sign and you do have planets right at the end, I feel that this event is going to play out into your situation very strongly. Now, because Mercury is also squaring up with Pluto, Mercury square Pluto in a natal chart, for example, will give a person tremendous powers of perception, can slice through things and really get to the heart of what the matter is. But again, it can come back to that kind of dogmatic, overbearing type of personality. Now we know there are some big players on the international stage, whether it's in politics or in terms of the current uh, situation that's going on, uh, very sadly, in the Ukraine and also in uh, the Gaza Strip, there will be some players that may want to, to use weapons in order to make points. And that's where the energies of Mercury are so interesting because I feel Mercury has uh, a reputation of being the communicator, but the sign of Libra can seem to be a bit pacifist. But don't be fooled, because when Libra is really aroused, it can be very, very fierce and push back. So what I would say to you is that this event 
does point towards some of what's going on on the wider world stage. We've got lots of people who are trying to say, look, there are reasons why these disputes have evolved over many, many years. And there has been a lack of comprehension about how some actions have led to a deep burning resentment building up over time. But that doesn't give anyone the right to use weapons and violence in order to make their point because all that does is perpetuate the cycle of dissatisfaction, land grabbing, um, a sense of, of dislocation, the pushing of ordinary people away from where they're just trying to lead their everyday lives. So, you know, Libra and energy is not a panacea, just like I don't feel that Pluto moving into Aquarius will be a panacea. But there's no doubt about it, we all know that Pluto in Capricorn definitely represents the institutions and the the um, domination that they've had over a very long period of time. So in some ways, the events that are occurring are disruptive and at times disruption is required to in, uh, in, engender a more positive outcome, but it doesn't certainly feel like it does it at the present time. So in our current situations, it's very important that we work hard at who we are in terms of our relationships, how we relate, the conduct that we take, the manners that we use, how much we acknowledge the other person's viewpoint, even if we don't agree, because that, I feel, is the most de-escalating thing that anyone can do, is just say, I really hear what you're saying, and I really understand what you're saying. I might not agree with you, but I hear it, and that can be very powerful. So for all of us, Rather than taking polarised positions and just really being hostile and defensive, the art of the Kazemi here is to use the sub decan rulership and of course the wonderful Venusian rulership to try to get some uh, accords going, to try to improve our relationships. But if we are dealing with a, an outright bully, someone who's not being fair, we've got no choice but to push back. And that really is the key energy of this particular event. However much we talk, it's not the same as truly comprehending. Please stay with me as I go through each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces. So let's take a look at those signs. Well, for Aries, I feel it can be about work-based relationships. You know, you could have someone who's really not very appreciative or, or acknowledging of what you do, but I feel that you could find yourself being more vocal, Mercury, in terms of pushing back the Pluto energy of saying, look, this is what I have done. You're not necessarily going to get that person to fully appreciate the input and, uh, and dedication that you may commit. But in a, a more romantic or partnership situation, if there are some subtle interplays that go on between who tends to want to get their own way and who tends to be a little bit more availing to that, there could be a shift that goes on at the present time. And it doesn't matter in what type of relationship it, it is. You know, if you feel that something's out of kilter and you're making way, you're the one who's making compromises, and it feels like the other person is taking that for granted, this can be a key event to have a big conversation about maybe realigning things in a more balanced Libra way. Now Taurus, for you, the combination of the Sun and Mercury is in House 6. House 6 therefore brings in the Virgoan energy of Mercury, so precision, details, making sure that everything's running in that a uh, very organized way that Virgoan or sixth house energy really relishes. But Pluto is in house nine and has been working wonders for you along with Uranus in recent years if you've gone with the flow in shaking up your world and bringing greater variety and spontaneity, stimulation, freedom and independence, travel, higher education. If you've really relished those things, what's not to like? Well, it's just that someone may be reminding you about some of the details you're not attending to because you're caught up in that uh, Uranian or Plutonian energy of being 
in the change. But I feel that for most Tauran people, even if you do like some changes and have, some, have had some changes come in in recent times, there's still that core part of your nature that does like things to have some strands of familiarity and stability. And it's a bit of a juggle. So if you feel that you're being very conscientious but you're losing your right to do your own thing, that needs to be your conversation to find your balance. But equally, it could be that, uh, as I mentioned just now, that uh, your engagement with whatever is exciting means that one part of your life has drifted a little bit and it needs some housekeeping. You know, whether it's about what you eat, what you drink, the amount of exercise you've got, uh, decluttering or cleaning the house, uh, some kind of virtuous effort is needed in balance with that part of you that's still looking for drama. Which brings us to Gemini, of course, Mercury is your ruler, and the sign of uh, Libra is a wonderful showcase for you because it's house five, which is all about passion, it's self-expression, it can be about joyfulness, uh, sociability, interactiveness. But if in your social situation there is somebody who tends to bring some politics into play, or there is someone who's rather possessive or jealous, or limits your uh, freedom, it feels, to go and do what you want in a very fluid fashion, very merc mer mercurial, then maybe that politics is something that you need to speak up against. It could be around a romantic situation. Then again, there may be someone that you're drawn to hugely that makes your pulse race, but you just know in your bones that that person is not necessarily going to be a person you're going to find it easy to get along with. And yet the sexual charisma, Pluto in the eighth, may prove to be so irresistible that you're still tempted. So just be aware of that. And also because the fifth house can be about risk and speculation and the eighth house shared resources, if you are considering doing something that does require some investment and you are in uh, some kind of uh, committed relationship where you both have input into the decision making, then it's possible that the desire to go for it can be a little bit greater than the other person's and that could cause some politics too. Now Cancer Pluto has been of course mainly apart for those 11 weeks earlier this year in your sector of relating since 2008. Huge changes have played out for you. If you do have planets or uh, positions late in the sign of Cancer this is a big deal this event and of course uh, uh, the Libra energy for you is about where you live, how you live there, who with, potentially, in terms of a more practical context, but it's also about how you feel. But Mercury in the fourth house can be a little bit of a, a tricky energy. We can end up circulating thoughts around our mind and find it more difficult to say how we're feeling. Or also, uh, the fourth house can make the clarity that Mercury can bring a little more subjective because the fourth house, as you know, because uh, your sign's deeply associated with it, is much more about our sensory understanding, our feelings. Sometimes feelings do not equate to facts, which Mercury is much more concerned with, certainly in its rulership of Virgo. Uh, obviously, Mercury's rulership of Gemini can be quite crafty and uh, a little bit opportunistic, uh, rather magician-like. But I feel that fourth house energy suggests that something may be shifting deep within your emotional world, but how is that playing out in terms of close relationships? It could be within your family, uh, or it could be that you're needing to make some changes to where you're living, and you have to interact with uh, a, 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 an estate agent or a realtor, uh, a bank for finance or uh, council officials if it's for a housing association uh, property and it may feel difficult to fit the criteria and that can create some pressure. So Leo for you the combination of the Sun and Mercury is in house three in the sign of Libra, you're looking to find balance around your relationships with siblings, neighbours. Uh, you're needing more stimulation. The third house feeds on 
uh, lots of snippets of information, gets very bored easily. This is a very Gemini position, but for you, third house, you're looking for balance around those interactions. But if you're learning new skills or perhaps sharing ideas you've had, you have a wonderful opportunity. But what about Pluto? Well, Pluto's in your sixth house of obligations, and it's really been holding you in a in a fierce grasp, I feel, since 2008. Because you are a fire sign and also the sun rules your sign, you know, the majesty of Leo has in some ways been deflected by the obligation of the sixth house of Pluto. And maybe there's been big changes around the structure of your life, even around your health. Um, if you're someone who's very much into pets, you've probably had quite, uh, quite uh, the journey around them since 2008, but three, six energy in a square creates a lot of, of potential tension because maybe we try to do too much. So the sixth house can be about virtue. The third house could see you speeding, trying to fit everything in, cram everything in. And so whether you're learning something or sharing something or trying to keep up with all, uh, all uh, your paperwork, and documentation, sixth house, classic sixth house stuff, uh, almost the tendency to uh, get too caught up in it. So try to slow things down and make sure that what you're speaking matches what you're feeling, which is not easy with third house energy, which can be a bit tricky. You know, it will tell a joke. It will change, change the subject. It, it deflects, but that's not necessarily a good thing. But certainly if you want to go out and be sociable and have a buzzy time or chat to someone that you find intriguing online, this is a great event for you. Virgo, now of course Mercury is your ruler and has those qualities that really give you the skill to discriminate, evaluate um, and just really dissect down into the detail of things. But for you, Mercury is in house two along with the sun. Everyday resources, money, self, worth, the foundations of your world, earthy, but you're wanting balance around those things. Are you waiting to hear back for about something to do with a financial matter? Uh, this is going to be important. Mercury's magnification by the sun can make you sharper about thinking about your resources and where you might squeeze a bit more out of your budget. But because Pluto's in your fifth house, which is to do with risk and to do with self-expression, the second house is about stability. The fifth house is much more about speculation. So this is probably not the best of times to be uh, too free and easy with your resources. Or you could, in a romantic situation, have different values, which it may not necessarily even be about money, but you may both see things slightly differently, which could cause some tensions. Maybe that is something that does need to be discussed. Very Mercury, very Libra. Now, when it comes to Libra itself, well, I feel this is a great opportunity to get things off the ground. And you are a cardinal sign when you really, really go for it you can find that you have tremendous momentum and this will add momentum. But don't expect people close to you to be uh, standing up and applauding you. If you're looking for those uh, uh, acknowledgements or those encouragements or approvals from those people close to you, you may be waiting a long time. But this is the lesson that Pluto has been trying to teach you, that yes, it's good to have very balanced and well-meaning relationships but if it's all give and no get use the eliminating energies of pluto cut out of your situation those people who no longer feed your morale as an individual not a people pleaser so it's good to be a nice person but you know it's good that people should be nice people or persons to you and so this event brings up to the ball again Another challenge, but another opportunity to live in your own power. Scorpio, the combination of the Sun and Mercury is in house 12, which can make us much more conscious of hidden enemies or the more psychological domain or where we may be fearful or anxious or where we're not quite embracing parts of our nature that we're not integrating because 
in some ways we're not comfortable with them so uh, we'd rather not touch so because you can be very private about your affairs but very blunt about everyone else's affairs it could be surprising that because Pluto your modern ruler is in your third house of quick communication that someone can say something to you that they've been thinking about about the way you are that surprises you so they reveal a secret but if there is something that you are feeling pained about that you're not feeling comfortable about this would be a great opportunity to seek out some support whether you do some great deep research online or you talk to someone who maybe has uh, uh, a very philosophical but spiritual input to help you to see a situation in a different way so you could have dialogue in a very healing manner especially if there are these um, parts of your situation that you're not feeling completely resolved and at ease with. Sagittarius, for you, the Sun and Mercury is in house 11. It's friendship. It's a kind of Aquarius feel, but Libra, you're wanting balance, communication in your friendship, particularly in your group, your network. But the things that you're personally passionate about in terms of your ideals, they're flagged up by this particular combination. Exciting. But that's the more idealistic side of your nature. Pluto, which has been battering you since 2008 around money and foundations, that's asking you to live in the real world. The real world and the world you'd like the world to be could come into conflict on this event. Or is it just that friend who tends to you know, ask you for uh, a little bit of help financially here and there, but then forgets the agreement, which is mightily annoying. So even if you're someone who's very, very generous, as Sagittarian people are, it won't be the money, it would be the principle. Or is it that someone in your friendship group has a marvellous habit of when you go out uh, for a, a group gathering to always be stood at the rear and never buys a drink for anyone. That type of stuff could really stick in your craw on this event. Or if you are planning some kind of longer term uh, initiative which you're excited by you need to make sure that it will stack up in a thoroughly practical way Capricorn the combination of the Sun and Mercury is in your 10th house this is an ideal time to apply for a job do a presentation raise your profile get people to understand by skillful negotiation very Libran what you have to offer now usually you are a formidable player you're a cardinal sign which means you're a leader you're patient you're applied you're diligent and Saturn gives you the staying power to keep uh, going when other people pack in but Pluto in your sign has probably had a huge impact on you over the last 15 years not always easy and maybe your work situation has been quite fluid there's been some changes a particular role you used to do is no longer available due to technology or the way we work now or the company involved is no longer in your vicinity blah blah so some kind of re-engineering or redeployment of past skills and knowledge and information can be adapted in a way that suits the changing world that we all live in it's just that Pluto in your own sign brings in your ego to play but Hold on, if you're wanting acknowledgement and recognition, you may have to play by the rules. So if you're a bit more of a radical-minded uh, Capricorn, you have Uranus in Capricorn, for example, and you push back against rules and regulations, or uh, perhaps there's a part of your nature that, yeah, you do like some of the creature comforts, which is very much in keeping with the sign of Capricorn, but there's another part of you that likes to be more free-spirited. So you've got Mercury, the Ascendant, the Moon in Aquarius, for example, or Sagittarian influences. Well, that could mean that you're going to have to make a trade. So if you really want to nail down that new position, that pay rise, that increase in recognition, you may have to adhere to what the other party wants. And if you are particularly free-spirited or bohemian type of Capricorn, that might not suit you particularly well. So there's a bit of a conflict to overcome. Equally, it's possible that you could find yourself um, 
with a little bit of tension going on with a parent, especially if in your situation it's quite hierarchical and you know the person that you live with or has ex expectations of you which are uncomfortable could even be in subtle ways that goes on with a partner watch out for that Aquarius for you house nine travel um, higher education international affairs uh, if you're someone who enjoys trading you know you're a marketeer really exciting combination between the Sun and Mercury you can convey your messages publishing really well with this combination so if you're looking to get something out there and monetize it a wonderful opportunity to do it but you need to understand what your motivation is Pluto if you're doing things for the right motive and you want to help people this can be wonderful for you if you're doing something which you know isn't quite sitting with you the uh, negatives can be amplified by the sensitivity of Pluto in the 12th and the ninth house exaggeration that comes from the Sun and Mercury this is not a time to promise more than you can deliver I nearly sounded like a very famous gentleman from America then you haven't seen that impersonation but it is pretty good one day I may surprise you and that brings us to Pisces well Pisces for you the combination of the Sun and Mercury is in house A in itself very Plutonian because it's about what can make way change but in a more pragmatic and uh, practical way it can be about long-term finances so pensions investments savings property real estate uh, can be to do with um, uh, legacies inheritances all that kind of stuff or if you're more entrepreneurial type of Pisces where you want to invest more in your business or where you want to defer some taxation very eighth house energy so Mercury can make you very agile to deal with that Pluto however is in the eleventh house so this is a slam dunk if you're in a friendship circle where there are a few people there who just always seem to want to call the shots and it does feel that it's just full on clickiness this is something that really could get you down at this particular time but maybe something's been building up for some while and remember the eighth house can be where we stop doing something so something makes way we just bring something to an end and Pluto's in the part of your situation to do with your future in the sign of Capricorn and I feel there's been a lot a lot of thinking about what your future should be over the last 15 years perhaps a lot of transitions around your friendships and associations perhaps this is another tender point where you may need to make some big decisions about the people you really feel invested in the eighth house people you feel devoted in the eighth house the people you feel very close to the eighth house or the people you want to break away from and go into that plutonian energy which is much more about your future hopes but not being held back because you feel some kind of deep emotional uh, commitment that actually when it comes down to it is more like someone has a grip of power over you there's some kind of manipulation or leverage going on that's classic Pluto square the Sun leverage so if you feel that something's being leveraged on you you may want to take it on and challenge it on this particular event. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd be honoured if you would like, comment, share or subscribe. For now, take care, all the best and goodbye.